Hey everybody, welcome to today, December, what is it, the 13th, 2022. This is the last one we're ever going to get, so let's make it a good one. Uh, so glad that you're hanging out with us today. Steve is traveling. He is somewhere off in the Midwest, I think. And he asked that I put together a program. So what I've gone ahead and done is taken our special program from a couple weeks ago. We did a, an entire hour event on how to train this winter without using your saddle. And so I've got that for you today. So if you're watching, please put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like so that you can say hello and other folks can say hello to you. Uh, if you have any uh, mule or donkey questions, put those in there and then we'll take a look at them for our next show. And then finally, uh, be sure to share the broadcast. Go ahead and smash the like button and go ahead and tell us that you love the show because uh, if we want to keep doing it, we want to know that you appreciate it. Uh, so go ahead, sit back, relax, enjoy the next uh, 60 minutes or so and uh, learn everything that you need to do in order to keep your mule or donkey up to snuff this winter. Tell me a little yeah. bit about why this was important to you. Well, this is what people are always saying to me. I want to ride. I understand. Well, and because that's the icing on the cake. That's the final part. But you have to build a cake. And in order for the cake to taste right, you got to put all the ingredients together. And then you put that final little coat of a good icing on there. Oh, my goodness. It, it, that's what just finished off. Now, you can eat just a plain piece of cake. But with that icing on there, far better. So I want to build you a cake. That's what I want to do. I want to build you a cake so that you see it's not important for you to be in the saddle. Matter of fact, I'd rather see you out of the saddle more than I'd see you in the saddle. Now, I, I'm going to be, you know me, Dave, I'm right up front, lay it right out. I'm going to be a little cruel, folks. Most of you are sitters. You're not riders. You're a wreck looking for a place to happen. Yeah, you're up there, man, you're with your friends and you're riding up the trail. But what happens if your friends leave and it's just you and that mule there by yourself? And that mule wants to be with its friends. Or that mule wants to be in the front of the line instead of behind the line. Or that mule don't want to be in the behind the line, he wants to be in front of the line. Or he wants to be with his other buddies. Guess what? You are a passenger. You are a wreck looking for a place to happen. And what's the biggest problem, Dave? Biggest problem is right here. Me. I'm the problem. I cannot point toward the mule and say, you're the problem. No, no. I've got three more pointing toward me. Okay? And I am the herd leader. Okay? I am. I have to be. I was talking to a lady earlier, and she says, well, I'm going to give them treats like I do my dog. I said, you don't have a dog. You've got an equine. And they are looking for a leader. They're not looking for uh, somebody to give them a treat. It makes you feel good. Oh, man, look at me. I get a treat. No. Give them a treat when they're running toward the canyon, and they're getting ready to jump off the side. Are you, how are you going to say, oh, take the treat and don't run off the canyon with me? No. Ain't going to happen, folks. You know, you have to have, it is imperative. You have to have this mule listen to you when you pick up on that bridle. Okay? And it's, you, you can buy all the, quote, trained mules in the world, which I've seen very few of. And especially I've seen a lot more now that I've got a chance to travel all over the world and hear these people say, well, it's a trained mule. Oh, yeah? No, it's not. No. If it can't be done in a 10-foot circle, turn on the forehand, turn on the hind quarter, side pass him, it's not a trained mule. Oh, but it's got a little kid sitting on its back. It's not a trained mule. Oh, it's got him standing in the water. Not a trained mule. Oh, it's going up the river. So you understand? All those things are all things. Hi, honey. <laughs> and they are not. That was my little wifey. Uh, anyway, they are not showing a mule with a foundation. They're showing a mule that is is going there uh, because they're used to being there. But now all of a sudden now, we go and take that mule and we put him in a different river, in a different rider, in a different place, and we're going to have a different mule. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So anyway, there, Dave, there you are. By golly, let's, let's 
let's let's ring things up and see what yeah we got a lot of folks joining us this is this is actually really humbling that this many folks would want to spend a few a few minutes of their evening with us uh we have sherman johnson we've got kiki lots of our friends from our tuesday program we've got laura peter merlin uh gary Uh, i want to tell y'all that if you experience any issues tonight with the video or the audio the best thing to do is to exit close the browser and come back in that's the best thing to do and we recommend using the chrome browser so if you're using anything other than chrome and you're having problems we recommend chrome uh, otherwise uh, it looks like the majority of folks are able to see us and hear us hey we got somebody coming in from canada that means we've gone international again and uh, the way things are going to work tonight is Steve has uh, some prepared comments that he wants to share about this topic of training without a saddle. So unlike our Tuesday afternoon program, where y'all ask questions and we get to them in real time, we're gonna be marking questions for the end. So as, and we're gonna keep those questions tied in to what we're talking about here tonight. We, we can have all sorts of questions on our normal Tuesday program, but we're gonna try and keep the questions close to this idea of training without a saddle, training over the next several months here before spring comes. And so I'll mark those and I'll ask Steve at the end. So please ask away as we go. Uh, The the next way this is going to work is I'm gonna be popping on and off the screen throughout tonight. We're gonna have some videos. And so the videos, Steve's gonna be talking over and then Steve, as you want me to fast forward or you want me to go backwards, you just tell me and I'll move them Uh, wherever you want me to take it to. But we're going to be doing some videos and Steve's going to be telling us what to look for. And um, we may have some props here that we'll share, but by and large, we're just going to get started, Steve. Where do you want to start tonight? Where does the conversation begin? Okay, here we go, folks. Number one, congratulations. You're wanting to learn. You're wanting to help your mule do better. I have so many new mule owners that constantly that I talk to on a daily basis and I'm going to tell you easy, easy, 80% of you that, that call in and talk to me, that email me, that text me, whatever it may be, are all brand new mule owners. Some of you have had horses. Some of you tell me about your experiences, but you're brand new mule owners. Now, congratulations, because here it is. You're riding a donkey, a mule, and a horse. You have three entities there that you are dealing with. You have three entities you have to train. There are times that people say, well, he's stubborn. That was the donkey that come out because that donkey, part of that mule was saying, I got to have more answers to my questions before I can go any farther. But instead we call them stubborn. We put a cavison around their nose to keep their mouth shut. We switch them on the butt and we make them do something rather than saying, okay, all right, now let's think this through. You don't want to go down through this creek. Why? What's the deal? Or you don't want to go by this particular stump. Why? What's the deal? You've seen stumps before. You've seen creeks before. Understand, folks, every day is a different day with these mules and donkeys. You can take and train in one spot and move over 10 foot and you'll have a different mule or donkey. And you're thinking, well, what happened? Okay. A lot of it had to do with me. How do I move my hands? Okay. A lot of it had to do with the tools, but I want to help you understand that you don't need to be in the saddle to build a foundation. You don't need to be where I want you to start really is on the ground. Now, when I first started my first cowboy job at 18, at uh, 12 years old at Dana uh, Cattle Company, I, uh, I had my hat on, by golly, I was a cowboy, and we were feeding cattle and stuff, and then we was working cattle on the ground. And so I said to the boss, Kurt Dana, I said, hey, where's my horse? He says, nope. He says, uh, when you can do it on the ground, when you can work these cattle on the ground and do it on the ground, then you can start thinking about a horse. Now, y'all hear that? Hear that? Okay. That's important to understand. It's not, it's not being in the saddle. It's being on the ground first. You can see their feet move. You can see their eyes, how big and brown and how quiet it is. 
you can see all this stuff. But most of all, here it is. It's not you training on that mule. In all actuality, you, you are, are being more finesse with communicating with the mule. More finesse. You're being easier and quieter. You don't need a bigger bit. You need smaller hands. You understand that? You don't need to change bits. You need to change your thinking. You've got to build a foundation first. And you do that with a donkey, with a mule, through their nose. Through their nose. That is what is important. When you train a mule, you train a donkey, you do it on the ground, through the nose. Not with a halter, but with the come-along rope. We have a lot of video out on, on about come along ropes and doing foundational training. I have a come along rope right here. This is what they look like when they come to you. They're wax coated, okay? And they're three strand, but they're wax coated. They're wax coated for several reasons. Number one reason is it keeps the rope from going up and down the nose. It, when it starts getting warm, it binds a little bit. Number two, it helps to be able to, when you put it around the nose, to keep it in the same spot so that you have to use less to get more. And the other thing is, too, you always want to wear gloves because sometimes when they get a little frustrated and they jerk back on you or they rear in the air or they try to take off, it's going to take the gloves to be able to hold them into place. Okay. So your come along rope is the most important tool building a foundation. So, Dave, what do we have for? training with the come along rope. So I've got a video here. Uh, this shows you uh, starting to put the come along rope on. And so uh, really just getting started. And then I've got some foundation ground training where you take the, uh, the rope around the butt and you get them to follow and listen to the lead rope. So I'll go ahead and I'll play here this first video of the come along rope. And you just tell us what we're looking at. And if you want me to fast forward, I'll fast forward, okay? Okay, so now right now you see I'm talking about a halter and a halter adjustment, which is a mis-adjusted halter. It's not adjusted correctly. You actually can hear me talk about this. And this is one of the videos that's on my YouTube as well. But notice how I have my come-along rope on my left arm. So now you can see the misadjusted halter. Now I'm going to put on the come-along rope. And what I need, Dave, is some video of me actually moving the mule, having them go around in circles, figure eights, and things like that. Right there I say, be careful of having that rope around your hand. Throw it on the ground. You see what I did? Then put the come along hitch on. Two fingers above the nostril. Notice I didn't keep the coiled rope in my hand. You got a good chance of getting hung up. So I threw it on the ground. That's where it is. Have we got a picture of, of me working the mule and figure eights and stuff? Underneath his neck, around behind the cord. Looks like it's a little fuzzy there, Dave. And then I have him go around in a circle. Watch, I'm standing in one place and I'm just bumping my hands. Now, when you get the ground communication kit, you get that ground communication kit, you're going to see me working with the mule like this. Notice what little bit I'm moving my hands. The mule is trying to figure out what can I do to get you to quit bumping on my nose. You see how he's coming around nice and quiet and I'm bumping, I'm not pulling. I'm bumping, you see that? I'm not pulling, I'm bumping. Notice how I'm saying as the mule walks, he looks down to see where he's going, not looking in the air. And that's what you wanna see. You wanna see the mule look down and go around. The video that goes with my ground communication kit shows me working with a mule and working with a buckaroo as well. Notice what how this mule wanting to really respond, and I'm hardly touching the rope. That's nice to see, okay? Now watch this. I'll go underneath his neck, over top his back, around behind his hindquarter. Notice how I'm holding onto his nose with my left hand. And notice how I have my hand where it, the rope comes underneath my little finger up over top of my thumb. And then what looks at me bump. Notice I'm not pulling. I am bumping, and the mule's trying to figure out what can I do to get you to quit bumping on me. Notice, I just start taking up my slack, 
and the weight of the rope is showing the mule which way to go. Not me pulling, but just the weight of the rope. And that's what you would need to do, folks. You need to have, if, it, if the tool is going to work correctly, like the bit or like the come along rope or like the halter, just its presence being there should ask the mule to do what it needs to do. Okay, Dave. I'm trying to figure out why it's why it's fuzzy there. I can't I can't quite figure out why the uh, why it, it's a little bit blurred in the background. Um, so that's the that's the come along video that I've got uh, queued up there. Um, where do you want to go next? Okay, so so let's stay right here for just a minute. Then we're going to go to the rope halter, adjusting the rope halter, and putting it on the sur single, and having the mule walk around with the halter on the sur single and also the mule riders martingale so let's go back folks when when i'm at bishop good that'd be a good one we'll go to a little bit later when i'm at bishop at the world championships i got nothing to tie to there are let's just say there's 10 teams there's eight animals per team five pack mules three riding animals I have to saddle my horse. I have to pack my mule. Now the mule has a saw buck, pack boxes, top cover. Nothing is on these animals. And there's 80 animals turned loose. Eight animals per 10, per, per team, 10 teams, 80 animals turned loose. On top of that, there's all kinds of real loud music. On top of that, all the crowds are screaming. And on top of that, all the mules and horses are running everywhere, and those cowboys are trying to catch them. All that's going on. I walk up, and I see my horse running by. I whistled at her. I put my right hand up. I went, and I put my right hand up. The mule came, the horse came right to me. When she came to me, guess what? All the pack mules that I use in my string and the ride animals all came to me. They come to me, we go over to where my saddles are. My saddles are all on the ground, my pack saddles and my riding saddles. I have myself and two packers, and then I have uh, a swamper, and that was Max Johnson, head packer at the Grand Canyon. So I had a swamper who had to pack two mules. Now there's nothing on these mules back we cannot tie them. We cannot hobble them. They have to stand there quiet with the lead rope on the ground. Now, I've got my mules caught. All these animals and horses are all running loose everywhere. I don't have my animals tied up. I put my saddle on, my britchum, I mean my saddle and all that stuff on, get my horse done. And then I throw my pack saddle on, my top cover, and I throw a, a 40 foot latch, latch rope called a, uh, a box hitch. My other packers are doing the same thing. Saddling a horse, packing a mule, saddling a horse, packing a mule. And then my packer, my, my uh, swamper, he's packing two mules. When I get in the saddle, the other guys take and tie their mule to my mule. Now remember, all these animals are still running loose in there. There's only one other team that has all of his animals caught, and that's the Grand Canyon Pack Team, and not too far behind that is, is Yosemite. So we get all of our five mules all tied together. Remember, they've never been tied to be saddled and packed. They've been standing there all this time with all that going on, all those animals running loose, all that music blaring, the announcer announcing, people are yelling, screaming, and clapping. Lots are going on. I get in a saddle, I dally up, I got five mules strapped behind me, and we take off running. We go to the gate. That gate is almost 40 foot long, and it takes several men to open it up. As I'm over and under and running toward that gate, leading five pack mules, there's my, as my packers, my two packers going with me, and then my swamper, Max Johnson, sitting back in the arena. When we go out of the arena, all these animals that have not been caught yet, I'm going to say 30, 40 of them probably, all went with me going out around the half mile track. I went around the half mile track and I come through the other gate. We set a new record that night. We packed five mules, saddled three horses and went around the half mile track 
in five minutes, 42 seconds. At that time, I could pack an empty meal in 58 seconds. So I said all that to say this, people who say, I can't get him to stand still while I saddle on him, why don't you take more time to do it? Because it could be done. Now at the Grand Canyon, we got nothing to tie to, nothing. We got one lead rope on the ground, one, one uh, uh, rein on the ground, the other one tied up on the horn, and we hobble our, our front mule. That's, that's how the rules are set up with us as packers at the canyon. We hobble, and then we have one, one tied on the ground. And then we go back, and we hobble our mules as we're going to our pack string, and we fix the problem that we need to fix. Then we go back, pull our hobbles off, pull the hobble off my riding mule, climb on. I don't have nothing to tie to, folks. I don't have nothing to tie to. Now, come here to Arizona. Cactus everywhere. Even the trees have stickers. I got no place to tie to. None. When I climb off, one rain goes on the ground, the other rain goes on the horn, and they're ground tied. They stand there. I may be working cattle. I may be working a fence. Who knows? Maybe leading a pack string. Could be all kinds of stuff. Now, I know a lot of y'all like to watch the old westerns. I love watching the old westerns. Hey, there's somebody there from Nova Scotia. Hey, Eugene, how you doing? Anyway, watch them old westerns. When they come riding into town and they come to the hitching post, do you see them take their bridle off and put their halter on? No. Why? Because that mule, so those horses, are so bridle-wise, so aware of any pressure on their mouth, they would just stand there rather than try to pull back on that. We would, a lot of people wouldn't do that today because most of your animals have no respect for being tied to a hitching rod. They're always moving around and doing things. You see, watch them guys. They just throw a couple of wraps around there. They don't even tie it. And they, they let the animal stand there. That's your, your ultimate goal, folks. There's no reason for you to use a halter except for when you're training in a sur single, which is what we're gonna show here in a few minutes. I'm going to adjust our halter. I'm gonna show you how it's done on the video. And then we're gonna do a little sur single work where you can see it. So here's your ultimate goal. Forget about your halter. Halter don't exist. Take it out of your vocabulary. I'll never forget when I bought my first nylon halters and I came back to the ranch with them. Old Bill Doherty looks at me, he says, what you got there? I had a red halter, I had a blue halter. Well, I felt pretty proud of myself. Nylon halters, big old brass clips on them, boy, and a big old snap. I really thought I was something. He says, them, them things are going to get you in trouble. And he was right. We trained a lot of animals over the next few years with those sorry nylon halters. When those animals pull back, they were called halter pullers. They'd break snaps. They'd flip over backwards. They'd, they, some even broke their back. A lot of different things went on. Okay, why was that? Because they were not properly trained to a halter by using the come along hitch, okay? Or one like it. Most people don't even know how to adjust a halter. Just look at them out there. Just look at them, horses, mules, donkeys. Look at where their halters are. Their, their, their knots are way up here in bone. I don't do a bit of good. It needs to be down here with their nose where you can shut the wind off. Does it hurt them? No. Does it break cartilage or anything? No, but you've got crisper, cleaner communication. You can tell horse people because the way their, their halter is adjusted. You can tell horse people because they got a great big huge snap on that thing too as well, which you don't need, okay? So the lighter you are, the better you are. It's the nice thing about the come along hitch. I go into a corral, I take my come along rope, I put my come along rope on my mule, I walk through the gate, I turn the mule around, and then we walk over to the where I saddle him. I throw my lead rope on the ground. I pick up all four feet. I clean them. I brush them. I put the saddle on. I put the bridle on, and I ride off in the sunset. Period. And they do not move. If they move, I'm not going to saddle and ride that day. It's more important for me to stay right there, and they learn to respect what I tell them to do. If I tell them to spend the day there, they need to do that, folks. We're being way too easy on our animals, way too easy on them. We need to be the herd leader, and a herd leader would kick the thunder and bite them to make them do what they need to do. Your little old 
pat on the on the chest or, or, or on the neck ain't gonna mean diddly, okay? So let's go over to the to the rope halter adjustment. Okay, so you can see the mule now. You can see the halter. And notice I'm adjusting the halter from my right hand side. I start with that knot first. And notice I push it and I hold it. Notice now how it's centered in place. Now I take my left knot and I pull it up into place and get it where it's fairly decent. Now, when I do that, I'm going to then adjust it a little bit more to make sure that the knots are in the right place. Notice the mule is not wanting to be there. He's moving around, dinking around, this sort of thing, you know. But notice me touching those places on the nose. You see how that mule backed up? Smooth and easy. So that's why you want to adjust those two knots on the nose, right side first, left side second, all right? Now, once you do that, notice I can put two fingers between those knots, two fingers. Now, I'll go ahead and pull that halter off and put the other one on. And notice what I'm gonna do now. I'm talking about how you see, this is a nice big flat one, but see that place back up underneath there? That's where that middle knot goes. That knot that goes right here underneath the mule, right here, that knot right there. That knot goes up into there and tells the mule to go forward. That's what that knot right there does, okay? And so that knot right there needs to be adjusted so that it goes into that spot. That tells the mule to go forward. Now you see I'm adjusting what's called the Turk's head knot. And again, we got all these videos out there. They're all free. You can go online. I'm sure Dave right now is getting it set up. So if you can go right to this very video and you can, you can see how it's done. See, now what I've done is I've taken an ill-fitting halter on this big Percheron mule. You see, it's a big mule. And I've adjusted it so that the knots are right on the nose. Now, here's where I would use a halter. Here's where I would use it for training only. I put the mule onto the hitching rail and notice before how the mule moved around a lot. And now I'm going to put the mule onto the uh, hitching rail and notice that knot adjusted up in the throat right in there. Now I'm gonna put it on the hitching rail and when he moves around, when he moves to the right, it bumps his nose. He moves to the left, it bumps his nose, okay? Watch me using it, and notice how I'm barely picking up on it. Now, I want you to understand now, before I adjusted the halter and used it, before I used the come-along rope to build a foundation. Now, notice the halter has now stretched a little bit, so now I have to retighten it. I, I'm not training with the mule, but I want to show you what the come-along hitch does when it comes down to the halter. With the come-along hitch being on there correctly, okay, and getting adjusted, I now can guide my mule very easily with a adjusted rope halter. But I have to first start with the come-along rope. That's where I have to start. Okay, Dave. All right. So I figured out I figured out the issue that was causing everything to blur. So hopefully you saw right. a lot better Good there. You. All right. Uh, so now all right. So that's the video of installing the come along rope uh, or installing the rope halter and getting it going. Where do you want to go now? Okay, now I want to talk about the sur single. You probably got some uh videos on the sur single and me using it. Folks, this right here is your most important tool that you can have in your tap room. This sur single. Take, you put it on the animal's back. And here's one of the problems. You all know it's your mule's roll. The nice thing about the surf single, if they roll on this, they're only rolling on less than $100. They're not rolling on your $2,500 saddle, okay? So you put the surf single on with a, a couple of latigos that come with it and a cinch, and you'll see it being used in a few minutes, but you, you, you put the surf single on, hook a breeching, to the surf single on these rings, okay? On these rings, hook the breaching to it, and then you turn, you put the, the 
the rope halter on and you turn the mule loose in the round pin and just let them go. Or a square pin, whatever you got, a 20 by 20 pin. And when you turn them loose, they are going to learn on their own to get themselves into place. That's the nice thing about that. Now you have to use a breaching. I had a guy the other day said, I took your martingale, Steve, and I put the martingale on him and they were two for two days and it didn't change a thing. And I said, and he said, I watched the whole video. And I said, where's your sir single? He said, sir single. I said, yeah, you said you watched the whole video. The video shows the sir single being used with a martingale with it. Without the sir single, the mule can bring that bridle forward and the bridle means nothing to him. The sir single with those rings help keep it in place. Did you find a video there, Dave? Yeah, I've got a, I've got the video ready when you're ready. Okay, anytime, go ahead and put it out. <clears throat> this is one of my apprentices. She came in from Idaho. This kid couldn't have weighed 80 pounds, soft and wet. Boy, but she was quite the ham. Now, I've got this one video. I've got a lot of others too, but we're, we're, what we're doing is we're hooking up the halter, as you can see. And we're also, I think we're also hooking the martingale up, but I can't see that just right. Okay. So you can see the other mule in the background. There's a surf single all rigged up with the breaching. Notice that how the surf single is kind of in the middle of the body. That's okay. That's what it needs to be. Notice there, uh, Dave, how do we get rid of this? New Riders Martingale video. How do we get rid of that square? It's on my it's on my picture. There it goes. I hit an X. Okay. Notice how it works. Notice that mule. His nose on the vertical. Notice I'm not in there moving him around. Notice the breaching helps keep the the sur single into place. And then when he's hooked up to the to the bridle, see his nose on the vertical and his head down. Notice nobody's on his back. Nobody is there. Okay, now she's putting up, she's putting on the, the martingale. And notice how she has the come along rope on as well so that she has control of this little mule. This little mule was a scamp. He was a, just a dirty sucker. He would be really nice one day. And the next day he would just be the devil himself. I notice how she's using the, mar the, uh, the uh, come along hitch to tell the mule to stand still. And the mule's moving around and she's using the come along hitch to get it to stand still, bump, 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 bump. And the mule moves around again, bump, bump, bump. This mule didn't want to get along. Tough mule, tough mule. But you see, you want to have the come along hitch on there so that you can control the mule to get him to stand still and quiet. It's more important that he stands still and quiet. That's a great thing about that come along hitch. Again. Look at how the martingale, I mean, how the sir single fits this particular mule. He's a little shorter coupled, so the cinch is a little farther forward. Now, the martingale is like taking, uh, the, I mean, the sir single, the sir single with the, with the britching and the head stall and everything like we have there. That's your tune-up, folks. Notice how that mule immediately dropped his head. That bridle is really loose. Notice how loose that the reins are. And notice how that mule's nose is on the vertical. Notice how loose those reins are. They're very loose. When the mule moves off, then that thing tightens out. Notice the mule's nose on the vertical. The bit is doing the job. That's what is happening. All we do is we set it up to win so that the reins are adjusted, that are loose. Notice how everything's hanging loose on it. And as the mule walks off, the nose is on the vertical. You see that? Look how loose the reins are. Nobody's on his back, but that, that sir single with that martingale is teaching that, and notice the rope halter too. So we're at the stage of using the rope halter and the martingale together. In the very beginning stages, we only use the rope halter. And then as the mule progresses, we use a combination of the martingale and the rope halter together. Eventually, we wean them off of the rope halter and just use the martingale. And then we go from the martingale 
into the finish bit, the trail rider bit, and then even to a hackamore. But notice how these mules, folks, this is important. Nobody's on their back. Notice how loose these reins are. So it's telling the mules that when you are correct, and you drop your head, the pressure comes off. Notice how they move around. Look, 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 look. See, that's what you want to see. That mule is listening to that bit. If that nose is sticking out, the mule is not, is not respecting that bit. So you see, you can train and not have to be in the saddle. You can set the surf single up, set the breaching up, put the martingale on there, put your rope halter on, turn them loose. Turn them loose. I'll, in that round pin there, I probably pit, put, oh, 12, 14 head of mules in there. And I just turn them loose. Let them go. Just let them go wherever they want to go. They start learning to get their nose on the vertical, start learning to get their head down. Most of all, they start learning respect, respect for that bit. Look around, folks. Look around. Go on the internet and see. Where do you see those mules' noses? The nose is sticking out. Where do you see their heads? The head is up in the air. The head is not down. When they have that bridle in that hand, those none of those mules should have their head in the air. They should be balanced and framed up. Top of their hip, top of the wither, balanced, framed up. Nose should be on the vertical if they're in the saddle. That's what it should look like. That's what it should look like. There's no reason to have one with their head in the air. You'll see like one mule I looked at today, uh, Butch had sent me the, the, some pictures from Washington area. The mule's head was clear in the air and there were several different bits, several different bits. And remember folks, you have a different palette on the mule because they have the donkey skull, the donkey skeleton. And when you use horse bridles, you're going to, yes, you can ride, yes, you can get things done, but you're not gonna have good, clean communication with their horse bridles as you can with my bridles that I designed from what I learned from the mule. Again, folks, I didn't go into tractor supply and pick up a bit and say, okay, this is going to be a mule bit. No, no, no. I worked with the bit. I worked with the bit makers. Rangeman makes my bits. They're the top bit making company in the world, probably. And, but they make quality American made bits. Americans made them. Okay. So this is really important that you all see that that Sir single on that animal's back did the job. So, here, here's the martingale, right here. Here's the martingale, and here's the bit. This is a double twisted wire snaffle bit. The idea of the double twisted wire snaffle bit is so that it evenly communicates to the tongue on both sides. Do you see that? Evenly communicates, so when it lays on that tongue, it's not just in one spot, it's in double spots. So let's pull the martingale video up with me training on a person. All right. All right, let's see here. Martingale. Oh, you know what, Steve? I I uh I don't have that one queued uh the martingale one queued up. Uh go ahead and go ahead and talk for a second and I'll I'll get it queued up. Usually what I do, folks, is I'll have somebody stand in front of me as if I'm on its back riding. I have that person put their hand on the bit. And I tell everybody else, look, I'm going to communicate to this part of the body, the shoulder, this part of the body, the hip, this part of the body, the foot. I don't want the person standing in front of me to know where I'm pointing because I don't want them to move because they, they think they have to. I want them to move because when I bump my hand on the rein, they will teach the shoulder to butt, then the hip to move, then the foot to move. And you'll see in a video how I can actually teach somebody to turn to right, turn to the left, back up and stop by simply opening and closing my hands. Not moving it, you'll see me move it. You'll see me moving it around and using that, that uh, mule rider's martingale, but you'll see me using a person and see how light it is. It's very, it's an extremely light bit. The problem with the smooth snaffle bit is, is horsemen tend to over pull. And when they over pull, they end up cutting the tongue. And we see that a lot. 
a lot of cut tongues on mules because people are going to horsemen, horse trainers to fix their problems. Folks, I, I'm doing this video for you. You can do this. I've got a lot of clients, a lot of clients that are using my techniques and are fixing their problems, especially the problems that other horse trainers do. Watch these guys that say that they're mule trainers or they do, they do clinics and say they're mule trainers. Look and see where their halter is. Knots way up high. Look and see where they place the saddle and no breachings. All that's going to tell you, do they really have knowledge of the mule and donkey? Do they really? So this, this martingale is one of my favorite tools. Uh, I've got a string on it. You see the string? The idea of the string is to set the head so that the nose gets on the vertical. It's not the, the string is very light. It's lighter than the rain. And you can see the string barely hanging in there nice and quiet. And when the mule moves, it's the string making the communication, the string going across the bit, creating a violin bow on the violin, telling the mule to get his head down. The bit by itself makes the head, the nose go out and the head go up in the air. When it's adjusted, like you see on that sur single, you see it adjusted correctly, that mule will respond and do correctly, head down, nose on the vertical. And we do it within a matter of minutes, minutes. Now, we never have, never set these animals up on time. We always do it when they start responding and are getting quiet in the eye. Getting quiet in the eye. How you doing, Dave? Did you find it? Yeah, I found it. And I accidentally, I realized I accidentally queued up the one where you were, um, where you were doing that with the come along rope. And I'm about uh, 10, 15 seconds away from having the, having the one. Remember when we went to Prescott with James Montana? Yeah, That's the yeah. one that I've got right there of you showing him. Showing him. Okay. I'm about, uh, about 15, 20 seconds away. Okay, good. All right, so here's the deal, folks. Mules, when you start training, you start from their nose and work your way to their mouth. That come along hitch, you use it from now on. You don't need to have that rope halter, except for when you're training, which you just saw in that sur single, or you're training, which you just saw when I was using, I went from a come along hitch to a rope halter, and you're doing some training, okay? But 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to use, get this in your mind, the rope, okay? That rope, come along rope is what you're going to use. You'll have your animals so soft, because now you're able to communicate with your hand, the smoothness, you train from the nose. Listen, every day, every day, you take those mules out of the corral and go to where you saddle them. You're training from that spot to that spot. The mule is only to be straight, not to look to the right or to the left as they're going. It's up to you to keep them straight. And as they go over to where you're going to saddle them or groom them, they're to think straight. They're not allowed to look to right to left. If you will do that with that rope halter, I mean, with that come along rope, you cannot believe the difference it'll make in your meal in just a short time. And then doing the other exercises we do, like the figure eights and the backing up and things like this, which is in the video that goes with, oh, excuse me. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. The video that goes with the ground communication kit. So did you find a video there, Dave? So if you take anything away from here at all, folks, what I'd like to see you do this winter is four to six hours a week. That's all. Hear this? Four to six hours a week. Okay, here I am. Notice I got a big guy holding on to the bit and holding on to the bridle. And I've got my hands in direct reining position. Notice how I move my hands and I'm telling the, the one handling the bit what is going on. We'll wait a second. Now, I'm talking about how I move in my hands. And I've talked about him with his hand on the bit, which is the same as 
been in a mule's mouth. Now, I'm showing him how when I barely pick up on the reins, I can make his hand move. Barely pick up on the reins. There should be one, Dave, with him facing the other way away from me. Because this isn't doing what I want it to do. What I wanted to show you here is how light this bit is but we're not at the place where we can do that with this particular video. Yeah, I I think I grabbed Okay, there you go. Okay, let's let's back up a little bit and notice how I bumped the guy forward. See that? Watch, watch me barely move my hands. Do you see? I I barely moved my hands and I was able to bring the guy forward just barely bumping my hands. That's how much control. Do you see that? That's how much control this bit has it's a wonderful thing too bad we don't have that other video of me actually steering the guy walking behind him yeah i apologize for that oh. i grabbed the wrong one there yeah all right so here's what i would do folks if i was going to tell you something i want you to do four to six hours a week that's all but don't put all that four to six hours in one day or in two days spread it out according to your mud and you're cold and things like this. But if all you did in your barn was put your sur single on, your martingale, and your breaching on, and just turn the mule loose, look how much softer he'd be. See, there's nobody up there. And when there's nobody up there pulling on the reins, the mule would teach himself to be soft. Oh, forgive me. Oh, my goodness. All of a sudden, I got the yawns here. Of course, it's 7 o'clock here. I know it's later other places. But I appreciate you being there. But notice, folks, how you use the sur single attached to the breeching, which the sur single is attached to the bridle, and it helps get the mule to be soft, just like that bay mule that you saw and that white mule. Notice nobody was on their back, and it was immediate, head down, nose on the vertical. Do we have a picture of that mule that we were looking at earlier today uh, where the lady was talking about how she had him all sidled up? There. I notice, folks, look how loose those reins are. You see how loose? Notice the, the come along, I mean, the martingale adjustment going down between the legs. You see how loose? It's not so tight that it pulls against the animal. It's loose enough that all it takes is the weight of the reins, the weight of the martingale strap, and the weight of the bridle, nobody's on his back, that's the way your mule should look. Going down the trail, riding down the trail, your mule should look like that. Look how loose everything is. The reins are loose, the, the, the bit is loose, the bit is hanging down. If you would use the sur single and turn your animals loose four to six hours a week, come spring, you would have a phenomenal animal. Phenomenal animal. Now, if you've got the weather and everything's right, go to that sur single. That sur single is going to help your timing and your hands. I mean, I mean the, the martingale. I mean the, the come along hitch. Ah, pardon me. The come along hitch. That come along hitch is going to help help you understand how to move your hand to do go to the right. Move your head. Go to the left. Okay, do you understand that? That come along rope, you moving it helps the animal to go. They already know how to side pass. They already know how to fold, do a turn on the forehand. What do you mean, Steve? Well, because in the natural, they, they, they know how to side pass. We have to teach them a cue. In the natural, they know how to turn on the hindquarters. Teach them a cue. Here we go. I'm saying, watch my hands. And I'll tell you, watch the feet. Watch the feet. I notice I'm going to teach the mule to stop. 
Notice how I'm going to barely move my hands. Watch this. I barely closed my hands and that foot stopped. I'm teaching a, a, a whoa right now. Okay. Now the mule starts to go and I go right, left, right, left, right, left. And I tell the mule, no, you don't, you don't go forward. Don't pull on it. When they pull on the reins, you go right, left, right, left real quick. What that's going to do is going to teach them to get off a bit. Now notice I'm barely moving my hands and they're going to right and left and backing up. Notice that I'm barely moving my hands right, left, back up. See that? Do the same thing with your mule. You barely have to move your hands with this martingale. Notice here, look at this. Barely moving my hands. Now I'm do doing one handed as if I built a foundation. Notice how I'm barely moving my hands. That bridle has so much communication. It's not the bit, folks. It's how I designed the bridle around the bit in order to get the mule to give you good practical response and respect. The biggest problem we have today, biggest problem, is they have no respect for the halter because of nylon halters. They have no respect for the bit because of all the different horse bits. They've learned how to get around them. That's what they have, you know. So there we are, Dave. What's the key thing? The key thing is do groundwork with the come along hitch using the ground communication kit. What's the next key thing? Using the uh, sur single and turn the mule loose and let him get soft. He'll get his tongue over top of the bit. That's okay. He'll move his mouth all around. That's okay. Pretty soon he'll get quiet and he'll get quieter and quieter and getting his head dropped on the vertical and he's going to be all right. But you have to give him time. Don't expect to have a 12 year old mule in two days, then respond and this sort of thing if you don't do it correctly. So do we have some questions, Dave? It comes a nice. Donkey. Before we get to questions, I wanted to I wanted to just give you a chance to talk through this one right here. We're going to install the mule riders martingale here. Okay. Notice one of the things that I've done is I've tipped his head to me, and I'm using the middle finger to rub on the bars. Notice I didn't give Dave the finger. <laughs> I just showed how I use the middle finger to rub on the bars because this donkey didn't want to take the bit. And notice how light and easy, the right ear first, then the left ear second. All I did was take my middle finger, rub on the bars. I went and pulled on his ear there. There we go. That's better. There we go. There we go. And I, I rubbed on his bars to get him to be nice and quiet to take the bit up. And now he's packing the bit. Notice I'm hooking the sur single up here. You see the sur single all getting all hooked up to this donkey. You donkey owners, if you want a soft donkey, you, that sur single is going to do it. Uh, you mule owners, you want a soft mule, that sur single with the martingale is going to do it. It's these are all easy tools. You don't need a big place to go to go places. You don't need a big area. You know, twenty by twenty is usually it. Now I'm showing how light and easy. See the donkey moving around. I'm not doing a whole lot unless the donkey stops. Then I twirl it a little bit. But there goes the donkey going around nice and quiet. He stops. I'll twirl it a little bit. Just make him uncomfortable. But I could care less how fast he goes. I want him, but I want him to eventually get to where he just kind of pokes and along goes easy. Look, his head's down. You see that? Nose coming on the vertical. That's what we're looking for. That's going to be end result. Very good. That's real helpful. I'll uh, I'll make sure to send out links tomorrow uh, to the videos that we took a look at. And folks, you're going to be getting a copy of this. But we want to go ahead and make sure that we get all of your questions answered. And so I've been marking a few questions throughout the throughout our time here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with a message from uh, Pete. Pete says, "Can you talk about getting a young mule to lift its rear legs for the farrier?" Okay. Anytime you pick up a foot. You put your left hand on the hip. You know, you're on the near side. So put your left hand on the hip. You take your right hand and go down the leg nice and quiet. And just before the hawk, put a little pressure on that hawk. When he takes the pressure off and he kind of picks the foot up a little bit, leave him alone. Put, put it back down. 
Put your hand on the hip bone again. Run your hand down. He's thinking you're going to let go of him. But you hold a little bit more pressure with your hand. And you touch just above there. Now here I'm using picking up a front foot. Notice how I'm pushing on the button right there. And notice the foot's moving. You see that? Then I catch it right there at the joint and I pick the foot up. Now that's a front foot. And there's a button. There's a scapula that sticks up right there on the shoulder. Now the back foot. Notice, slide my hand down, put my hand on the hip, hold it on the hip, kind of push on the button a little bit. Notice how the mule comes away. You see that? The mule comes away. So I slide my hand down, come around to the hawk, and I go and pick up the foot. Now the mule moves a little bit. That's okay. I'll rub on that backbone again, on that hip bone. Slide my hand down right at the hawk, pick up on the foot a little bit, push on it, touch on it, okay? touch on it again, push on it, touch on it. Don't get in a hurry. Push on it, touch on it, push on it. There. Now you want to bring it forward first, then put it down. Do the same thing again. Bring it forward first. Now put it down. Don't get in a hurry to hold on to that foot. When he relaxes, then do that right there. Notice I pulled it forward first, then went straight back and went over to the center. All right. Uh, next question. How do you use the halter with the sur single? Okay. So put the halter on as normal. It's all adjusted up correctly. Take baling twine, attach it to the bottom loop on the halter, and go off to the ring on each side of the sur single. Always, folks, when you put your rein, your, your reins on or your, or your twine, always go right where the back straps are. You'll see the back straps coming off of the breaching. Always go to those, and that way it's pulling against the breaching and not pulling against the surf single. But you'll take baling twine. It's light. It's easy. And then by using baling twine, you're not making him to get his head on the vertical. But with that baling twine, just holds it in a place. And the mule will drop his head. This question comes from Emily. I'm the one doing the most training with our mule, but my daughter is the one who rides him the most. She is 14 and only started riding a year ago. I have 20 plus years of horse experience, but this is my first mule, so I'm a beginner. Should I have her do the training instead or just have her working with me as he learns his foundation skills? Have her get in there too. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with having... You show her how to do it. Perfect. It's a great father and uh, our, our, our mother and daughter get together. It's going to be great for a father and son get together. It's a way to communicate and take your time, and the mule gets the benefit. Uh, next question. This one's from Jacqueline. Local mule trainer specializes in Liberty as well as another well-known in another state. Both use treats when the mule does what asks. Both believe in rewarding as in being a corporate manager's encouraging positive behaviors. What are your thoughts? I say forget about the treats. If, if the mule can run, you know, uh, can, can run at liberty, I mean, that's no problem. You can simply do that. I don't need tra treats to have one run at liberty. I just simply use the natural way and that is using my body squared shouldered as aggressive, angled shoulder passive, moving my hand to the right, makes a move to the left, moving my hand to the left, moves to the right. That is natural horse training. Feeding with pellets and, and this sort of thing is not natural, folks. Okay. You don't see another mule out there giving another mule pellets because they did good. You see them scratching and rubbing on each other. Use a natural pressure. Right hand up, they go to the they they go. Uh, left hand up, they go to the right. Right hand up, they go to the left. That's natural pressure. Step by their nose, they will stop. Step toward their nose, they will back up. That's natural. This is not natural mulemanship when you have to use treats to do it. Now, do they have to go at liberty? No. That may be fun for you. It's not that much fun for the mules. I guarantee you, it's not like a horse, you know, where they got to go and they got to go. The mule says, all right, I don't see the sense in this. Show me what you want me to do and I'll just do it for you, okay? The only time I'll put one in a brown pin at liberty is when they are hard to catch. And then I'll teach them how to catch. I'll teach the mule, I will catch them, okay? I do not just put one in there and do 
what's called round pin training that John Lyons made famous. I don't do that stuff. Uh, I do sur single work, like you saw. That's the only time that I do any type of round pin work with these mules, unless they're hard to catch, then I'll do some round pin training. And I've got some video to that. Otherwise, my round pin is just like you saw that white mule and that the bay mule. That's the only type of round pinning work I do. Stacy asked, can you use the same placement on the nose and the face for a horse as you do for a mule? Yes, you can. Uh, matter of fact, I suggest it because think about this. When you have those knots out there on that horse, where are they? They're on bone. you got to work a lot harder, a lot harder to get them to respect that come along rope or that, or that rope halter when it's up on bone. But when it's down here, shut the wind off, they want to respond a lot quicker, a whole lot quicker. Notice how quickly those two mules responded as soon as I turned them loose. Turn them loose, let them go at liberty, what did they do? Get the head down, nose on the vertical. Immediately, because the halter was adjusted correctly. Would I use my come along rope on the horses? Yes. Would I use my adjusted rope halter on the horses? Yes. I learned that from Nick West, one of the top horsemen in Alberta, Canada. That's where I learned rawhide work. That's where I learned how to use a Bozellis like this. That's where I learned how to use it. Now, we had a question about hackamores, okay? And a mechanical hackamore is not a training tool. It's just a, a relaxing, go out, ride, barely pick it up, enjoyable tool. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, next one here. Uh, this one, uh, actually, we've got uh, Tina says, I'll be ordering me a Sir Single. We've got uh, Tina also saying, can't wait to try it. Aaron says, ordered my Sir Single, to single tonight, getting to work ASAP. Um, next question that we've got here. Uh, this one is, uh, Steve says, or uh, Mary asks, how do you cure pawing? My mule paws in the stall for food or attention. Can you give a quick answer on that? You know, Dave, we've got a lot of video out on that, and we actually touched on it in our last clinic. This here is more focused on how can we keep, can we, how can we get them soft and supple and not gotcha. riding them? You know, it's more important. Uh, you can probably point them towards some of my video, uh, like just the one we just did two hours yeah, ago. That's good. Where I talked that's good. We it. actually did quite a bit of talking about it uh, just a little bit ago, and I'll put a link in there. Thanks. Uh, the next one, how do you use the halter with the Sur single? We showed the video. I'll share a link. Can you just tell me why the halter and the sur single go well together? Okay, so the idea of the sur of the halter is because it's properly adjusted on the nose, and you want to train a mule from the nose. I never started any of them mules just with the martingale. I only trained them with the halter to start with. So the halter, there's two knots on the nose, and then it's snug it up right here on the bottom. It goes back with two pieces of twine where you'd normally put in a, a, a lead rope, and then it goes back to the rings of the sur single. Now, as you saw in that video, when they go to move, if it was a real heavy rope, it would make them even heavier in the face. But since it's only baling twine, it makes it light in the face, and they will barely want to pick up on that bridle. They'll barely want to push into it because when they feel that halter bump them on the nose, they want to get their nose on the vertical. And when they feel that halter tell them to be straight, they're going to want to be straight. There's three things you want when you're riding. One, number one thing, you want to be riding straight. You don't want to allow the mule to look off the right or to the left. You want to be riding straight. Next thing is you want the head down. That balances them across the top of the hip, top of the wither, and to the hip, and to the head. What that does, it gets them to drive off their hindquarters. That's balance. Nose on a vertical says, I'm listening to the bit, I respect the bit. The next question is, my mule keeps turning her head to the right when I bridle her, how can I keep her head still? Okay, when she turns her head to the right, take your finger and push right in below the cheekbone, and she, when she feels that pressure, she'll move away, you take your finger away, put your finger back again, put, put your finger back again, and every time she moves her head to the right, put your finger in there and put pressure on it. So she's thinking, I'm going to evade you, but you need to say, when you do that, I'm going to make you uncomfortable right here. Uh, Steve, real quick other question. When we're putting the cinches on with that sur single, is it loose in the front? Yeah. 
tight in the back when we're doing if we're doing it with a saddle or is it tight in the front loose in the back okay so when we're doing it with a saddle it's tight in the back loose in the front when we do the surf single we only have the one cinch the cinch is not the important part here the important thing about the cinch is the cinch helps keeps the surf single from rocking right and to left it keeps it centered it's the ropes coming off of the halter it's the reins coming off of the bridle that go back to the sur single and that attaches. So here's your sur single right here, okay? And these rings, your, your breaching is going to attach right here. See how there's a double? Your breaching is going to attach into here, to this one, and then your reins are going to attach into here, okay? So your breaching is going to attach into here, your reins are going to attach into here. Your string from your bailing twine from your halter is going to attach into here, down to your halter. Your breaching is going to be hooked back here. Now it's a steady pull. And what this does, the breaching keeps the, the martingale or the halter, when they pull on it, it keeps the, the breaching in the, in the right place, which makes the pressure on the reins the right amount of pressure. Yeah, that makes sense to you? great. Uh, Misty says, what about a 28 year old mule that is no longer rideable? Do you still recommend doing these kinds of foundational training? You know, the nice thing about doing this, it gives them something to do. You know, my wife's mule was 28 years old, you know, and, and, and we rode her all the time. I had other mules that were in their thirties, rode them all the time, but we use a surfing loan. It gives, gives them something to do. It gets them on the vertical, gives them something to do. Uh, we're almost done here. We've got, uh, what is the martingale attached to the halter? Is there a bit, uh, bridle bit included at some point? So, uh, so you can do it with the rope halter or the mule riders martingale. It would be the rope halter to the, uh, 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 bale and twine, right? The rope halter to the bale and twine hooked up to the sur single. And then the sur single hooked up to the bridge and a single cinch for the sur single. Correct. And then right. with the mule riders right. martingale, it's going to be and and you don't it, the mule riders martingale comes with the double twisted wire snaffle bit and the uh, specific martingale meant for uh, meant for the mule to work with the double twisted wire snaffle bit. We get folks who say, well, I've got a bit. Can I get the bridle or I've got a bridle? Can I get the bit? We won't sell them separate because we don't want you to get poor results. We don't want you to cause problems. So when you're using the surcing training with the Mule Riders Martingale, it is the double twisted wire snaffle bit, which Steve talked about just how, how gentle it is, but how much control you have with the Mule Riders Martingale, the bridle connected to the surcingle and then connected to the britchin. And then of course the cinch from keeping it uh, from rolling. Is that, did I get, did I nail it? You nailed right. it, buddy. You nailed uh, Deborah it. Deborah says, my come-along rope tends to ride up on the face or the nose. What am I doing wrong? Okay, all you're doing is you're training. That happens. It's going to go up and down the nose. So it's a matter of you getting your timing so that it don't move so much. If it moves a lot, your timing is not on the money with the mule. Your timing's behind it. So the mule has already elevated his head, and then when you went to bump it, the rope follows the head. So in other words, you need to progress with your timing so that you use lighter movements to get more. All right. And I think last question that we have, I bought my mule. Uh, I bought my mule who had been ridden with a particular bit. Could I switch to your bit without causing problems? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, I, I, you know, I love to see people change these bits out because here's the deal folks. When you buy a lot of these mules, they just find whatever bit and put on them and then put a story on them. I'm sorry. They do. They put a story on them. Oh, this bit's the best one. They probably only had the mule for a couple months. How would they really know? How would they really know? The difference is my bits have been on hundreds of mules all over the world, and I see results. Awesome. So, folks, that's pretty much everything that we have for tonight. Um, if you've got more questions, be sure to send them in to us. You can send them at support at muleranch.com as those questions come in. Um, I'm going to put a link one more time to our recommended surf single, uh, our recommended uh, martingale, and our recommended uh, ground foundation starting kit. That's what we talked about tonight. Of course, we say, you know, hey, 
look at the products. Look at look at what we're doing. If it works for you, if you want to give it a go, give it a go. If you've got a better way of doing it and that's working for you and getting the results, then that's fine too. But what we want to do here is we want a couple things. Number one, first and foremost, we want you to become the herd leader. And so we want you to have the control that the herd leader has. And if you watch how these animals interact with one another, you see that lead mare in control. We want you to be the one who's in control. That's the ground foundation starting kit. That's the come along rope. And that's the video that comes along with it. In that kit comes the rope halter. And that rope halter is going to be used with the sur single to soften up your animal, to get your animal to respond to the nose, to respond to any type of pressure, and ultimately get that nose on the vertical to a place that says, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to, I'm going to stay straight. I'm going to do your thing. I'm not going to do my thing. And then as you progress, you get into the mule riders martingale to where you begin to get control in the mouth. You don't, you're not going to ride with the rope halter. You're going to ride with a bit, but you want the animal to be soft as you introduce that bit and you want them to respond to the bit. Steve, anything else you want to add uh, before we say we're done here tonight? No, I, I, I see a couple people say, hey, I got my mule with the martingale, but I didn't get a, a how-to video with it. So, uh, Dave, you know, we can send them a digital yeah. video of how to use it. Runs about $25. If you want a copy, a hard copy, they'll run you about $35 and about $10 of shipping. So, obviously, the digital will work. So, if they decide to do that, they need to send me an email that says, hey, Steve, I need the digital DVD or video for my martingale. I will make up with them an invoice, send it to them. They can pay it, and then we can have you, of course, which you've done yeah. in the past, send them the we'll digital video. We'll get them all video. taken care of just real quick. Vicky says, thank you. Rebecca says, great information. Jack says, thanks for the refresher. Uh, Neoma says, thank you for all the information. I'm just starting, and at this point, I'm spudge. Good for you, Neoma. We're glad to hear that. Uh, Jacqueline, we'll get you fixed up. Send us a message. Judy says, was well worth the time. Pete says, thank you. Christina says, thank you. Learned a lot. Sabrina, thank you. We just got thanks around. Folks, this is the starting point of the conversation. This isn't the end of the conversation. If you feel like, man, I've still got questions, let this be the beginning. Reach out to us. Support at MuleRanch.com. We can point you to more videos. We can get you on the phone with Steve if we want, but we want you to gain the trust of your animals. We want you to get results. This should be a rewarding thing for you. It shouldn't be something that you walk in, throw your hat down, and just feel frustrated. This should be an escape for you, something that you enjoy doing, and we're committed to making it happen. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Steve, I want to thank you especially uh, being a little bit later. I saw some of the yawning uh, catching on there, but I know you were glad to be here. I know folks were glad to have you. And uh, I want to invite you folks to join us on Tuesdays for our live stream. If you need to get signed up for that, send me a support at mealranch.com email. I'll get you signed up. Steve, last words. Uh, one of the reasons I'm yawning is folks, I've been sleeping too good. Uh, I found out that I got two vertebrae out of place which makes my hip go out of place. So I'm getting about two hours worth of sleep and about three hours worth of walking around trying to get my, trying to get comfortable. And then my wife having a minor operation, uh, trying to help her throughout the day. Yeah, it's taking a toll on me. I missed my nap today and, uh, which I got to have a nap every day and I missed it today. So yeah, I there got, it is. I got a couple of y'all. Bye. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank God you bless all. you. Take care. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And uh, we'll see you next uh, next Tuesday. Bye-bye, everyone. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions or if there's anything we can help you with, go to support. Send a message to support at muleranch.com. Uh, everything that Steve talked about in today's presentation and today's show is available at muleranch.com. And uh, yeah, go check it out. If there's anything else that we can do for you, be sure to reach out. We want to help you. We want to make sure you get the results that you need. Uh, it should be a lot of fun and enjoyable owning one of these animals, uh, not frustration. So let us help you wherever we can. God bless. Merry Christmas. And we'll talk to you soon.